She's starting her takeoff roll now. Avro Vulcan B2, Spirit of Great Britain. children you've heard it I hope we'll hear it again during the display I'm really not quite sure what causes that I don't think anybody is but it's something to do with the aerodynamics of the engine intakes doesn't always happen it depends on the weather and the humidity and all sorts of other things but the unique sound there of four Rolls-Royce Bristol Olympus 202 engines uh, each producing roughly 16,500 pounds of static thrust 65,000 pounds in total had lots of operational equipment removed also she doesn't have two stout navigators down the back which always helps reduce the, uh, the, the weight. She has just three crew. Uh, the captain and flying today is Bill Ramsey. Spirited wing over there from uh, Bill Ramsey. So this aircraft was first of all thought of, the Vulcan, immediately after the war. The wonderful Roy Chadwick, who designed the Lancaster, drew on a scruffy piece of paper which still exists, a shape which is recognizable as Vulcan in 1946. Now that was only five years after the Lancaster first flew, which is quite extraordinary because when you look at this aircraft and you compare it to the Lancaster, they might have come from different centuries. She first flew in 1952, um, so that was only 11 years after the Lancaster first flew. So last year we were celebrating the Diamond Jubilee of the first flight of Falcon, along with of course Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee and every time she flew last year we had permission to say that it was in celebration of Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee. Engines producing quite a lot of unburnt fuel out of the back as she comes back towards us. And if you look at the underside of the aircraft, I think you'll see the Bombay doors opening shortly. There they go now. That's the Bombay that carried 21 1,000 pound bombs all the way to the Falkland Islands and dropped them on Port Stanley runway, hitting them with two of them. That was about par for the course for a uh, non-directed, non-smart bomb at the time. So it did the job that was required of it. What does the Bombay have in it now? Well, it has the names of lots of people who've sponsored their name to be in the Bombay. So if you would like to have your name flying in this magnificent aeroplane, you should um, go down to the Vulcan village at the far right-hand end, which is where Vulcan will be parked again when she lands uh, back at the end of her display. So go down and see them down there. You can sponsor, have your name uh, in the Bombay as she comes back. This time I expect to see the Bombay closing. She's got very good binoculars. You might be able to read the odd name in there. Bombay closing now. between 1960 and 1968, but it's now snappily known as Robin Hood Airport, Doncaster, Sheffield. She lives in a sumptuous hangar there, and uh, she takes visitors, you can go and see her when she's not flying, uh, they'd be very happy to welcome you up at Robin Hood Airport, Doncaster, Sheffield. I think it's easier to call it fittingly. So, see, we've got the wheel later today. I should say somebody who's not on board today, uh, is Kevin Taftstone, the crew chief and the chief engineer. He always says, 558XH558, this aeroplane is my baby. 
and I, it was, I was questioned the other day as to why I always refer to her as she. Well, Taff put it quite nicely, said she's definitely female. She is very high maintenance. She requires a lot of looking after. As she goes away, you get an idea of how slim she is uh, in cross-section. This is going to be her last year, as of something called Operation 2015, which may well mean that she goes on flying until the end of the 2015 season. More about that to be found out down at the Balkan Village or on the website. Look at that. Air brakes out, nose wheel held high, just dropping down as she passes by.